audience, my name is Lucia Ferrara and I'm Director of Hospitality here at the Precious Blood Renewal Center. And welcome back to the kitchen. Today we are going to make palachinke. And if anyone knows that word or been familiar with that recipe, it is just Croatian crepes. I grew up on these things. My mom would make them for me and my brother in the mornings. Um, especially on the weekends when there was more time to make the breakfast meal and everything. And it's just a simple old fashioned recipe that there are a lot of variations. So I am sure in your family you have a crepe recipe that you might want to share with someone. Um, but this is a recipe I wanted to share with you guys that I grew up on. So. Um, the first thing we do is I want to show you all the ingredients that need to be in the crepe recipe. And usually it's things that are in your cabinet anyway in the kitchen, so we're in the refrigerator. So we're going to start off with um, one cup of all-purpose flour. Okay, so you want to put that in your bowl. Then you're going to add one cup of milk. All right. And it could be any kind of milk that you have in the house, truly. A pinch of salt. Usually, people like to put at least a half a teaspoon of salt, but I have to watch my salt intake, so we're just going to do like a little pinch, okay? And then we are going to put in three eggs. One, two, three eggs. This is a great recipe, by the way, for young children who um, you want to pass down a recipe or just spend time, quality time with in the kitchen and teach them a little bit about um, what you're doing. Uh, so we have three eggs that we put in here. Now, the key to this recipe is the club soda because the club soda act activates the gluten that's in the flour. So, oh, we don't want that to happen now, do we? Okay. I'm going to open this club soda. We know it's fresh because you don't want flat club soda, okay? No flat club soda. Okay. Just going to put that in there. Now, the other thing that some people like to put in there is a pinch of rum or, I don't know, back in the day, my mom used to, sometimes she put a little pinch of bourbon or a little pinch of rum, kind of just depending on what, you know, you have in the house. And I had a little bit of rum, but I like to use these small bottles because they're good when you're baking cookies and things and cakes. Anyway, I just use a little top full, kind of gives it a little flavor. Like I said, that's completely optional. Okay, so we are just going to stir this together. And you really do not want a lumpy, too much of a lumpy batter, but there is a solution on that. Okay, and I will share that with you in just a second. Now, It doesn't need to be stirred or beaten for too long or too hard. Okay, just make sure all the ingredients are in there. All right, and it's not going to be a thick, thick batter. Remember, we want it to be kind of runny. Okay, so now what we're going to do with this is we are going to cover it for about 10-15 minutes and the reason why we do that is allow the 
um, like I said, the club soda activate into the batter. So the longer you leave it, the better. But for today, we'll leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then we'll come back and I'll get it ready and we'll make our crepes, our palachinke, on the skillet. Okay, so we're back and we are going to make our palachinke. So I've got the uh, batter here. I'd give it one last stir. Okay, and I'm going to turn this on medium heat. We want our skillet good and hot. Not too hot where it's going to burn, but warm enough. Okay, and so you're going to need about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of butter. And I have them already cut in little bitty pieces here. So I'm going to put the butter in. <clears throat> you can see I'm letting it kind of melt. Okay, so we want this really hot. Now the first one is always your test run. So it may not be how you like it, but you're going to tilt and swirl or twirl or whatever you want to say your skillet. Now this yield, this recipe here that I gave you yields about 10 crepes. Okay, so enough for about five people if, you know, you they you serve them to a piece. If you're anywhere like anyone in my family, we used to eat probably ten a piece because they're just that they're just that good. Okay, so we're going to take about a fourth of a cup. Doesn't have to be exact. And if you have a ladle, a small ladle, that's even better. Um, but I used a fourth of a cup here because I wanted to show you. So we're just going to put that in there. We're going to twirl this around so it kind of spreads. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to let that cook. Now it may take about two to three minutes on this side to cook. Then we're going to flip it over. And if you are watching the palachinke, it is actually spreading itself. It's growing. It's cooking. And um, so we're going to let that kind of uh, cook here. And usually you don't have to butter your skillet. Um, for maybe two or three palachinka and then you can butter it again. Now if you don't have any butter, it is okay to use whatever oils you have, cooking oils that you have in the house. So if you have um, olive oil or if you have vegetable oil or corn oil, you, you can use that oil. However, I I wouldn't use olive oil too much because olive oil's uh, heating doesn't it doesn't heat very well. Okay, this isn't quite ready, and and when you know, it kind of starts coming off to the side. But I don't want to flip it yet because I want to make sure that's getting good and kind of browned on the other side. The first one, like I said, usually takes the longest. Okay. So, and once you've made palachinka quite a bit, you can kind of see it's starting to get a little brown on the bottom. See where it has the brown, but I'm going to go ahead and let it cook for about 30 more seconds. And um, different countries have different recipes, variations of recipes. I mentioned that earlier. Um, but this dish was typically used in the Balkan countries. Um, 
and um, they usually made it for breakfast. However, you can serve it as a dinner meal too because you make can make it savory. Okay, there you go. We just flipped it. Now remember, these are homemade, so they may not look like the perfect crepe that you would get in a restaurant here around town, um, but I can assure you that the taste is just really, really good. Okay, so you're just going to let this brown up a little bit. Okay, and there you have it, the palachinke, okay? So, I'm not going to put any more butter in there. I'm going to take some more of the batter, and I'm going to start twirling it around, tilt my pan, okay, going to let that cook. You can tell that this one's already different from the first one. And usually you kind of know it's cooked when you can kind of flip these little sides over just a tad bit. Okay. So. Okay, I'm going to flip it. There we go. And what's neat about this, these uh, palachinka is that you can make these ahead of time. So if you wanted to, you could make a whole one or two recipes of these, stick them in a Ziploc bag. But before you do that, I would take parchment paper and separate each crepe with the parchment paper so when you take it out, for breakfast or dinner or whatever, then um, they don't stick, okay? But you can freeze them for up to two months. Okay, so we're just going to continue the process. My skillet looks a little dry. So I'm going to add some more butter. Hear that sizzle? I'm going to put this in here, the batter. We're going to twirl it around. And we're going to continue the process until all your batter is gone. And so let's do this and then we'll show you how to serve them. Well, we are done making our palachinke. So here's what they um, look like when they're all done. And um, I probably have around 12. So it kind of depends on how big your skillet is or whatever, um, how many you get, and how you twirl it around to make it, you know, round in your skillet. So I'm going to take one. Actually, I'm going to take two because I have my friend that's going to be joining me. And we are going to fill these. Now, this is the fun part because you can make sweet palachinke or you can make savory palachinke. So I'm going to do the sweet ones for today, which means... You could put any filling that you want. You can put fresh fruit, you could put whipped cream, some people put yogurt, some people just use powdered sugar. Some people, when we were kids, um, my mom would use uh, jellies or jams or preserves. And her favorite used to be the orange marmalade. 
So she would put that in there, and man, those were good. My favorite was jelly, or grape jelly, and strawberry, which I have here today. And then I also love the fruit spread apricot. You can use pineapple. Um, we also, as kids, used to use Nutella, which is a chocolate hazelnut spread that <clears throat> you can use to spread on your crepe. Um, also, if you don't have any of that stuff and all you have is pancake syrup or maple syrup, by all means, use it. Now, crepes can be savory too. And what I mean by that is you can completely make this like a dinner thing. Well, you can make crepes for dinner too and have them sweet, but um, people make scrambled eggs in there. They do, they put bacon, pancetta. They can put, um, some people make like a ground beef type of mixture with vegetables and they put it in there. I mean, you it, it, the, it, it, it's just the possibilities are really unlimited. So it depends on what you want to do. So today I, I prepared some fresh strawberries and blueberries and I'm just going to and I sliced them and what I like to do is uh, I like to prepare this the night before because then the juices kind of merge together and it gets real nice and sweet and then I add a little bit of whipped cream okay and then you just take your crepe and you just close it like that. I'm going to decorate it with a little powdered sugar. Voila. And I'm going to use the apricot. I'm kind of in the mood for the apricot today. So I just spread apricot. Here. And then what I do with these is I roll them up. That's it. So there's our crepes. So we have our nice dessert like crepes. We have our jelly filled crepes. And I want you guys to come see me and we can make crepes together we can make palachinka together and you can serve it with some nice hot tea or coffee of your choice and um it brings back a lot of memories so but they're fun ones so i want you to enjoy the same kind of memories that i have with palachinka so but before we go i just wanted to um Pray for peace today. Um, I think we need peace every day, not only in our own lives, but um, in our world today. So um, I just want to say this prayer for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, let us offer pardon. Where there is discord, let us build peace. O Divine Lord, you taught us that those who work for peace are called the children of God. Help us to persist in establishing justice and truth as firm and lasting foundations of peace. Lord, you offer us peace as a gift and peace as a responsibility that we must realize with your help. Give us the grace to reach for peace, to have attitudes of peace, and that our words may be of peace, and that our works be works of peace. Then we may build the peace that we in our nations need. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you, and we'll see you again.